Okay, Dov, thank you very much. Good morning from my side. So we will not talk too much about creating PDFX4 because that's a really simple thing. I would love to give you some background information on one side on the historical thing. We started this morning with 20 years of, of PDF. Uh, PDFX is not that old, but almost. Uh, and then also uh, talk about uh, uh, the different variants of PDFX and uh, a concept called PDFX Plus. And uh, I invented even a PDFX Plus Plus, which is on top of that. And I uh, also want to give you some insight on the use case I was involved in the last two years uh, by introducing PDFX4 at Novartis Pharma uh, on a global basis. So that's the, uh, the agenda for this uh, presentation. Here I put together some information about my, um, myself. Uh, I'm in this business since quite some time, involved in PDF more than 20 years because I was already interested in PDF in 1991 and got the first copies of Carousel, which was the code name of Acrobat in like 92. It's still on a SideQuest drive somewhere in my office, but unfortunately I cannot read those SideQuest drives anymore and this program would not run anymore. But uh, I think I still have some, some uh, pre-release uh, pre versions out of this application. S uh, since uh, more than 20 years, I'm running my own uh, consultancy company specializing on PDF since 1996. And I'm also heavily involved in these uh, standards. I'm a technical expert to the TC130, which develops the PDFX standards uh, since 15 years. I, that I used to be, until two weeks, the technical officer of the GAN PDF work group. Uh, I resigned there, but still are a member. And uh, I'm also a little bit involved in the JDF development. And uh, as I said, since two or three years, I'm already I'm working for part-time for Novartis. So history, we already heard, we have 20 years of, of PDF celebrating these days and uh, already 12 years of PDFX. So the first PDFX standard came out in 2001. And these were the basic uh, technologies or, or, or cornerstones in this, in this version it was based on PDF 1.3. Uh, so the result of that white paper Olaf uh, showed this morning, uh, where all, all most of our wishes we had on this white paper were fulfilled in PDF 1.3. So that was the first version could could really uh, uh, used for for defining prepress documents for printing with everything in it, which was up to date at that time. And that was PostScript 3. So PDF 1.3 is fully compatible with PostScript 3 which uh, was published in, in 1997, was the last version of PostScript which came out. So the, the, uh, the PDFX 1A standard, it, it, it was limited to CMYK and spot colors, uh, so no ICC-based color, no color management, etc. And basically everything which was not used for prepress data was prohibited, like movies, links, annotations, etc. That's all not allowed. Inside uh, the printed part of the page, that means inside the bleed box. Everything which can lead to unpredictable output is prohibited, like transfer functions, alternate images, uh, embedded postscript and stuff, which some systems will use, others won't. Uh, that's all forbidden. Everything has to be in the same file, including the fonts, the images, a little bit of requirements for metadata, but not too much. There were some operators which were missing in PDF 1.3. So the ISO committee uh, sat together and redefined four additional areas and went, then went to Adobe. Adobe at that time was not part of the ISO committee and asked them, begged them to, to include that into PDF. They even were very nice and, and published a tech note uh, where everything was, was described and then later on it was part of PDF 1.4. So this was mainly the output intent, uh, but also the whole page geometry concept, trapping key, PDFX identification, that's the, the four things which we identify we need to have a, a good uh, file for prepressed data. So that was in 2001. This was quite 
could adopt it worldwide. Uh, there is uh, a broader specification, which is PDFX3, which is basically the same than PDFX1A, but allows also ICC-based colors. It's not a need and not a requirement, but you can use ICC-based colors and LAB colors. This version is very popular in the German-speaking part of the world, not in other parts. I'm, I'm asked a lot, why is it so popular here? Are all people doing color management in PDF files? No, they don't. 99% of all PDFX3 files don't have ICC-based colors. The reason are these two men here. Because when we started with PDFX, uh, there was no software creating PDFX3. So you could easily buy a, a plugin from Apago, uh, which could do PDFX1A, which was the same cost than uh, an Acrobat version would cost. So you could go to a graphic designer and say you have to buy Acrobat. Then you have to take the same amount of money and then you have to buy this plugin. And there we, we, we said it would be nice to have a free plugin to do the same thing. And we could convince the BVDM, which is, uh, or at that time it was BVD, Bundesbahn Druck, and IFRA and UGRA, which is a similar organization than FOGRA. FOGRA we also asked, but they didn't have money. Uh, UGRA had some money from, from EMPA, and uh, they sponsored the development of a, the PDFX3 Inspector Freeware, uh, which was based on the, on the Carlos Preflight technology. And uh, these, these uh, little men became quite popular here because th these were the, the signs of the, of, the, of the pedestrian lights in eastern Berlin, which they teared down after the, 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 the wall was gone, and they now, they're now back again. They were so popular. So, and Olaf, I don't know if he really had the rights to use those, those uh, icons, but uh, those were, were used in this, in, this, in this software. That's why... And, and the political mistake we made at that time, we said we want to, we only support PDFX3 because PDFX3 is both, is X1A and device independent colors. And at that time, we thought we can do it with all, with one standard. And, and we, we were positioning the PDFX3 standard, which was developed uh, by Olaf and myself, the first draft. And we wanted to position that against the American proposal, which was PDFX1A. And then uh, we decided, oh, we keep both and we do even more, more variants. Uh, so that's why this confusion is a little bit around. But since 2001, 2002, there were a lot of technical developments. We got new PDF versions with new features. We got new features in layout applications, uh, supporting these new PDF versions, and uh, also Luckily, improvements in the output workflow. So we have PDF rips now, which can take uh, a native PDF and render it directly without going through PostScript. We can they can handle transparency. All the the uh, uh, output workflows can handle transparency, even if their rip can't. So they have a built-in flattening. But people are still using PDF X one A and X three, and that means mainly a problem for transparency. Because you cannot have PDFX uh, 1A on X3 files with native transparency, so you need to, to flatten transparency. And there are all kinds of issues involved in flattening. So object type gets converted, text becomes vector or images or, or uh, smooth shades are converted to images. And the image it always means a fixed resolution. If the resolution is not the good one, then you have problem in output. You have get conversions in, from spot color into CMYK. So just, uh, I don't want to make you afraid, but that's one of the files I found in the archive of Novartis. So it looks very well. Uh, obviously, it's, it's packaging, it's supposed to be spot colors, um, but if you turn off the spot colors, you see that m the major part of these graphical elements are uh, in process colors, but not everything. Some parts are still in, in, in spot colors. That means the printer, the poor guy, has to print all the process colors plus all the spot colors. That's like an 11 color job. Uh, that's absolutely crazy. And that happened through flattening. So only the parts which are not uh, 
uh, covered by transparency. They stayed in 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 spot, and the rest was converted to 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 CMYK because you cannot combine. So you could theoretically combine two two spot colors and make a transparency, but if you have a, a gradient, then you would you would have a lot of new Pantone colors created. That would even be worse. So this is this is an, uh, one of the nightmares you can you can uh, uh, face when you work with flattened uh, files. Uh, but there's a lot of other things. I'm sure everybody's aware about this this phenomena called the white lines, which most of the time are not white, uh, but they 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 uh, have the color of the background, which is a problem of anti-aliasing, especially on, on on the monitor. But it can also happen in the output. Here I have a sample from uh, from one of my customers where he had this uh, yellow line in in an ad which he placed in an InDesign page and then somehow these these fractions of objects got, got moved and uh, then he had this line in output. So there's a lot of things which can go wrong with flattening. We, we could talk for two hours, uh, have a lot of samples and so flattening is really uh, a, a dangerous technology. And the problem is when you get the flattened file as a printer you can have the most expensive tools in the world, you cannot fix it in most of the time. So that was one of the reasons that we, we, we met in, in, in 2005 in London to discuss how we can handle these new, these new uh, technologies, especially flattening. The, 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 the goal was on the agenda was to have a new version of PDFX3 2006 or something, uh, which allows transparency. And then the longer we talked, the longer the list became of the features we wanted to include. And then we decided it's way too dangerous if we only change the, 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 the year in this specification, because nobody knew and recognized that in 2003, new versions of PDFX 1A and X3 were, were published with minor changes uh, and not very important for the users, or not that important at all for the users. But if suddenly a 2006 version of PDFX 3 would be published, nobody would really make uh, see the difference. And that's why we decided we make a PDFX 4, and on the second day we even decided we make a PDFX 4. Five, with some more exotic features uh, to put them apart and to distinguish so a, a, a printer or a publisher can, can easily communicate with, his, his, with the people sending him data. Yes, we do support PDFX4 or we don't support PDFX4. That was the main reason. So what's new and, and additional in PDFX4? Uh, mainly transparency, uh, also layers in, in a certain way. I will come and uh, talk about that in a, in a moment, uh, JPEG 2000, some other things uh, which um, have much higher requirement on the output workflows than uh, PDFX 1A before because remember PDFX 1A and X3, they're equal uh, compatible with PostScript th 3, so every, every PostScript brick could output that, but layers and transparency in JPEG 2000 then at JP2000, I'm not sure. I think that's part of PostScript 3, but transparency and layers are not, so you need additional features in the output workflow. Speaking of layers, uh, which in a PostScript language is called optional content, uh, and uh, we, we had a long discussion on that, and, and we, we said it's way too dangerous if we just uh, allow regular layers, as they known in InDesign or Illustrator, uh, because if you get a file like this, and I, I ask you now make a a German and the French version out of this, uh, especially if you're not a native, uh, uh, you don't understand the language of the of the label, the, uh, of the layer labels, then you will have a problem. Even if you're German speaking, you would not be able to really uh, find the, the correct ways. I have this file here, so you need to find out. Okay, level two is the German text. Uh, Ebene three is the is the French text, and Ebene four is the German screenshots. Ebene fünf is the French screenshots. Ebene six, I don't know. There's no change. Uh, so it's it's very very difficult. So that's why we decided we need the creator needs to tell the operator of the output system or even the system itself directly which layers are belong to one output variant. 
And there's a technology already built into, into PDF called the OCCDs, Optional Content Configuration Dictionaries, which allow exactly that thing. So you can group layers together to a configuration, and then it's easy. You have two, two, two variants, and then you can output that. That was our reasoning, that, how, is, how it was implemented. The problem is that in certain areas, like packaging, this is too strict. If you have a pa packaging file, then you need more flexibility because a lot of people are looking on packaging files and some want to see the braille, the other don't, etc. So uh, the, the packaging uh, committee of the, the Genpedia work group asked the, uh, the ISO to loosen up these definitions. And that led to a revision of uh, PDFX4, which was published in 2010, which replaces the old version. So it's no longer valid. Uh, besides some, some small fixes in the text, uh, the main change was a more flexible handling of layers. Uh, using a, another technology was, which is available in PDF, which is called the Optional Content Membership Dictionaries, which allow uh, intelligent combination of layers, etc. And this one is the only one which was implemented by in Creative Suite. So the Creative Suite people, they, they uh, never implemented these configuration dictionaries. So the only way to create them was either using Acrobat pre-flight in a very cumbersome way. I think I'm the only one in the world ever, ever having done such a, such a file because it's really, really hard. Uh, or using PDF toolbox from Kalas. But otherwise, I don't know of any tools creating these, these configuration dictionaries here. Uh, but InDesign 5.5, CS 5.5, and, and Illustrator CS6 started uh, creating these uh, PDFX4 2010 uh, uh, layers. Unfortunately, they're not very intelligent, so this is the PDFX4 file, and it has the same structure. So we are back to the same problem. There's no grouping, the operator does not know what to do. Uh, so. But the, the potential is there using this membership dictionaries. A friend of mine uh, uh, has built a prototype, I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, with this change of, of uh, technologies in PDFX, we, we, we were running into a really bad compatibility problem uh, that these layers, uh, depending on how they are defined, are not cannot be seen in all versions of Acrobat. If you have regular layers, then it's no problem in every version you see them. Uh, if you have the, uh, the 2008 variant of the layers, you can only see them in Acrobat 9. You cannot see them in Acrobat 8, which I understand because that was, was uh, published before even, even uh, we were uh, thought about these kind of layers, but it's not supported in Acrobat 10 and, and 11. Fortunately, there are not so many files out uh, using this technology, but it's worse if you use the new one, the new layers, they're supported in 10 and 11, but not in 9, but you can see them in 8. And today, most of the people in prepress, at least that's my experience, I always ask people in my seminars, 80 to 90% are still using Acrobat 9 Professional. Because there's no reason to use 10, 10 uh, except some new errors and a completely new user interface where you find nothing. Doesn't bring anything new. 11, that's different. There's some nice features in 11. But people don't, don't update to 11. Uh, I, I, I offered nine seminars on Acrobat 11 in the recent weeks and, and four only took place with a minimum number of attendees. So it was a bad year for me. Um, but the... Uh, the problem is there's a real mess in, 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 in layers. So if you use the, the, new, the new layers in, in PDF 2010, then 80 or 90 percent of the people would not be able to see that, including most of the output systems, because they also did, did not recognize that there's a new, new form of layers. I was running around at Drupal last year and asked every, every vendor if they are, have implemented the new uh, 2010 layers. And most of them looked at me like this, and most and some others said, "No, we, we were discussing it, but nobody's using it. Why should we?" So this is the hen and egg problem again, and that's why at Novartis, at least, we decided not to use layers for the next two or three years.
until this is straightened out. It, layers are nice, especially if you use them a little bit more cleverly than it's done today in, in Creative Suite. Uh, how do I get that here? No. If uh, a friend of mine, as I said before, he, uh, he I think he took him several nights uh, to create this file, which uses uh, layers in a more clever way. So you have a possibility to to define groups like like the languages before. So there's a view for marketing people, there's a view for technician people. Then you can turn off certain layers, but depending on the view, if you are in the technical view, you can turn this layer on and off, but this will not change anything, only if you are in the marketing view, then this layer would, would make a sense, but this layer is then uh, without any, any functioning, so you can link groups and layers together, and, and, and you, you will still be able in each version to change the language, uh, so you can do any, any kind of intelligence. If this, this layer turned on, these layers are deactivated automatically or are, are not able to, 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 to function, etc. So you can do a lot of things. The problem is the user interface and how to define these things. So the layer technology, optional content group technology is very, very powerful in PDF. The problem is it's probably too powerful. And somebody has to come up with a, with, a, with a really clever user interface to define all these things. And then layers will also happen in packaging, I'm sure, because these people are waiting for that. Beside PDFX, we also have PDFX4P. Uh, X4P is a subversion uh, which adds an, one additional feature, which is a referenced output intent. That means you don't have to embed the entire ICC profile for an output intent, which can easily be 1.5 megabytes or even more. I recently got output uh, uh, pre-flight pro uh, ICC profiles with, with 9 megabytes. And uh, if you have a small ad and you have 9 megabytes of output intent and then you have 20 small ads on a newspaper page, then it gets a little bit heavy. So the idea was to, to, to make a link to the ICC.org, to the profile registry, or even to, to other websites and, and to reference to output profiles, which is a, quite a clever thing. Uh, we deliberately put that in a subversion because it, it's more, uh, it, it adds more requirements for, for, the, for the output workflow, but also for the viewer, because the viewer also needs to go and see if this profile is installed on your, on your computer, then use that, or use one which is very similar, has the same characterization data. Um, and do something clever with it. Uh, unfortunately, there is a new bug in Acrobat 11. Uh, if you open a file and you don't have the ICC profile installed, Acrobat 9 and read, uh, Acrobat 11 and Reader 11 crashes immediately. Works fine in, in 9 and 10, but in 11, it's the, the fastest way to, to close the application. Um, beside that, we ha also have created PDFX5 which only has subversions. So there's no regular PDF X5, there's an X5N, an X5G, and an X5PG. Uh, you originally, the, the P was also part of, 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 uh, of version 5, but then uh, it was felt that because version 5 is very exotic that not many vendors will, Im on, will implement that. So, and, and we, we thought that the, uh, the, five, the, four, the P version with just the referenced output intent uh, would be useful for a lot of users. And that's why we put that in 4 and the other ones were uh, put in, in, in the uh, X5 specification, which are basically two features. Uh, which is a, a, an end caller feature, so it allows to use uh, ICC caller profiles with more than four process callers. Uh, I think uh, Dietmar will talk a little bit about that, uh, but uh, he he knows much more than I do because his company is the only one supporting this uh, this uh, standard today, as far as I know. So nobody else can create those 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 files including uh, also Adobe is not supporting it in Acrobat. The G variant, which is very similar to what we had in, in PDFX2, uh, is uh, the G stands for reference graphic object. So you, you, you don't have 
to have everything in one file. You can have external files. And that's heavily used in PDF VT2, which you will hear more in this afternoon. So I will save that time. Uh, so that's the basis for, for PDF VT. So it gets a little bit complicated with all these subversions. So I tried to make a table with all the, the versions and the most important characteristics. Uh, as I said before, P there was a PDF X2, which had also external referenced object, but that was uh, retired because nobody was using it and basically replaced by PDF X uh, 5G, which has a little bit more clever way of handling these things. So I, I put here PDF X. In, in bold because I think that's going to be the main standard used in the next 10 years or so. PDF X1A is still, some people are using it, but that's going to go down. PDF X3 is basically dead. It's hard to, to say because uh, I was one of the fathers of PDF X3, but uh, since PDF X3 doesn't support transparency, as soon as you have transparency in a file uh, on, a, on a page, then when you create the PDF X3, transparency is flattened and you lose the main reason for X3, the device independent colors. Because first all the colors are converted into the, uh, into the, the, the transparency blending space and then flattening happens and then everything is gone. So X3 is dead. Uh, X1A, there are still reasons to use that. If you have CMYK only uh, plus spot colors, no transparency, but more and more of those people also go to transparency, and so they end up in, X, in X4. The other ones, these are more exotic, these sub subversions, I don't see them to become very popular, so they have their, their niche uh, uh, reason uh, to be there, but uh, not more. So here I put the table together on, on the different technology used to create PDF and how good they are in, in creating PDF X3. So uh, distiller is not supporting X3 because there is no transparency. There are tricks to do transparency via distiller, but uh, distiller does not offer directly to, to write a PDF X4. The same thing is true for Quark because they, they have a and a feature lay export layout as, as PDF, but what they do is they create a postscript and in the background they, they launch a distiller clone and convert the postscript to, to, to PDF. They mainly have a problem with the metadata also, that they don't uh, get the, the metadata correct for PDF X4. Adobe was uh, trying to support PDF X4 very early. The reason behind that is they wanted to sell their print engines because why somebody should uh, uh, buy a print engine when they only get PDF X1A file where a postscript print would be uh, enough. So they implemented PDF X4 already in, in Creative Suite 3 and the specification was not even published. Everybody was expecting that it will be published in 2007, but then at the last minute some additional requirements came from the PDFA community which said, hey, it would be nice to have PDF X4 com compatible with uh, PDFA. That meant uh, more severe restrictions on font embedding and more, uh, more rules on XMP metadata. That's why PDF X4 took one year longer to be published and uh, only the 2008 version is the real version. So PDF X 2007, as it's stated in, in Creative Suite 3, it never existed. And they also have problems with the, with the, the XMP uh, references. So the, you will get an error message if you check that in, in Acrobat 9 or later. In, in, uh, in CS4 then, they, they put the real thing in, but they, were, they didn't want it to support the, the, uh, the layers. So they did a dirty trick. They exported just to PDF 1.4, which is basically allowed in PDF X4. Uh, you can go up to PDF 1.6, but uh, so they could avoid to have the layer dialog uh, turned on, so it was grayed out, so there were no problems in creating layers. Only in CS55 with InDesign, they started using PDF 1.6 and then the, the 2010 version, so they could create these, these OCMDs, but in a very limited uh, way. Same for Illustrator in CS6, and uh, yesterday night, or this morning, uh, InDesign CC and, and, and Illustrator shipped, and uh, I'm pretty sure they uh, do the same thing than uh, CS6 uh, already. 
The open question is now Express 10, which will ship somewhere in the autumn. I had a, uh, a talk with uh, the product manager recently at, at uh, one of our Ghent meetings, and I would not be surprised if they do uh, PDFX4. But uh, maybe not in the first version, but they are they're working on it. They have to, because otherwise, if the, they don't support PDFX4, they will not be able to take the chance that Adobe is offering them on a, on a silver tablet by going through this silly subscription thing and making things twice as expensive than before. So uh, this is the chance for Quark to get back in business. But if they don't do X4, then it will not be possible. As I said, there is, beside PDFX, there is PDFX Plus, because in regular PDFX specification, there are no requirements for quality. So the PDFX says only you have to embed the image, but it doesn't tell you in which resolution. It could be a 24 DPI image and uh, PDFX is fine. B the problem is that these requirements depend on the the print product in a newspaper you don't have the same high requirements than you when you print on glossy paper on, on a sheet fed offset press for instance so it was decided not to put that in the iso specification because that will make it very complicated and it's very hard to update an iso specification it takes almost three years and to 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 out uh, source that to other uh, bodies and that was one of the reasons uh, of the of of the uh, for the foundation of the Gantt PDF workgroup, which define exactly on top of PDFX specification additional um, uh, specifications for different market segments. So it's basically a, a group of of users association, mainly in Europe, some of them in the US, some vendors, some industry members, and some educational members, which meet three times a year. So very intense uh, discussions and uh, we create these specifications and test files and we do certifications of pre-flight tools etc so these are the uh, the specifications we published last year for pdfx4 uh, there is uh, one uh, in still in discussion for packaging and uh, the pre-flight rules for these specifications are already implemented in uh, three different products on the market so uh, they're shipping with these products and you don't even have to install anything with you if you have one of these more recent versions of these products. At the beginning, when, when this PDFX Plus idea was coming up, every vendor did his own rules and his own set of things. So there was Enfocus and there was Colors and there was Apago and all had, had, had their PDFX Plus things and they were not, not the same. So that was very confusing. Uh, Gent took, took it over and uh, all the vendors uh, now uh, use this Gent specification, which is uh, quite, quite an achievement. Here is the details of one of this, this specification. I don't want to go into detail. You can read that for your own. This is a uh, big part is color. Another part is overprinting. And then there are some additional things like image resolutions, etc., uh, which are defined in these specs. At the moment, we only support device CMYK and spot colors in PDFX4, so like PDFX1A, because we identified that there are some, some, some problems when you output transparency with ICC-based colors. This became very apparent with the Altona technical page. Uh, we will have a, a presentation of one of the creators of the Altona page tomorrow uh, by Florian Süssel. He will go into more details. So uh, this 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 page was rendered differently on, on almost every output device. And uh, there is no bad and good. The problem is that the, the ISO specification for PDF and of course also PDFX is not clear on how to handle transparency in ICC based color. It, it somewhere it says do color management if necessary. But it doesn't say what what is necessary. So it was decided to 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 create uh, to work on a, on a, on a, on a paper to clarify how transparency should be handled as part of uh, 32,000-2. Uh, Leonard Rosendahl is, is is I think is the author or one of the authors, so he he will know more. And uh, so we will start discussing uh, the uh, the use of I ICC based colors in the Gantt workgroup. Not for everything, but for, for limited things, like for an images with 
with an RG, RGB image, it was an ICC profile. That's fine, but probably, uh, I guess, uh, RGB-based uh, or ICC-based blending spaces will be still problematic for the next for the next time. We will see that. So to 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 group those those different specifications, I, I made this this illustration. So the, the base is always the PDF specification, formerly by Adobe, now by the ISO. On top of that, there's are different subsets for different areas, uh, like PDFX was the first one, PDFA, now PDFE, we have PDFUA, uh, which you don't you add additional things to the PDF specification, they restrict. And on top of that, at least for PDFX, and I'm not aware of this, the same will, will happen in PDFA or PDFE, but we made this PDFX Plus specification for different market segments or printing uh, technologies, but that's not enough because we cannot say that all the PDFs for sheet fed offset have to be A4 with three millimeter bleeds and uh, only use uh, certain kind of fonts, etc. So then you have to go and then limit even more and reduce the, the, the possibilities for uh, publication or a company specific uh, rules. And that's what I call PDFX++. And I did several of these specifications and, and profiles for, for different companies, publishers. Uh, and the last one I, I made, no, not the last one, but one of the last ones was the one for Novartis. Uh, and that's the one I would like to, to present you briefly. So it's based on PDFX4, uh, CMYK plus, plus uh, spot colors, but only Pantone coated colors to make it easier. Uh, anything else is, is not allowed except for some technical colors, which we defined. We even made a, a, a color swatch for the, for the typesetters to, to use. And this these colors, at least the names, are based on a, on a, on a specification of the Ghent Workgroup also. Uh, at the moment, it has a strange name called Storing Non-Printing Contour Packaging Data in PDF. There's a huge debate on, on, the, on the new name going on at the, at the moment in the mailing list, so I don't know what, what the result will be. But basically, it defines all the technical information you have in a, in a, in a packaging file, like the, the dye line or the braille or a varnish and, 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 and things like that. And uh, uh, this shall be identified with metadata in, 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 in layers or in optional content uh, information. But since these layers are not really uh, practical these days, uh, I decided to just use the names of these layers for spot colors. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's, uh, six minutes. Uh, so uh, we added some other requirements like, like, uh, like image resolutions. Also, we, uh, we want to have live text because we're using uh, comparison tools which compare the text in the Word manuscript with the text in the PDF. And most of these packaging files, they, they, they were vectorized. They didn't have text anymore, only vectors. And of course, they're useless for text comparison. So uh, that's one of the criteria which we changed uh, to use uh, live text. This uh, brought a lot of benefits for, for the, the users, these are the typesetters, because they only have to create, to create one file format before they had up to three dozen different formats they had to create and, and send to the printers. They don't need to do transparency flattening anymore and, and ruin the files with that. So they have a, a sophisticated pre-flight check, which is mandatory for them. Uh, the printers get better files, the Novartis people get better files, they, can, they don't have display problems like before with, with overprinting elements and printing problems because overprinting uh, in printing is only, is only supported in, in, in Acrobat 10 and not before uh, in, in Reader and, and the standard version. So there's lots of benefits for, for everybody involved. Now, I'm already on the last slide. Uh, I st have stolen some some uh, topics from a, a survey Dov did last year on uh, the agenda, the future agenda for the uh, for the ISA committee on PDFX uh, de uh, development. So there's the, the black things. I think are those topics which are are given uh, that if we do a new version, which is not decided yet, I know uh, ne neither the name, but I guess it's probably going to be PDFX six uh, and will be based on PDF on ISO 32000-2. We'll have the black point compensation. Uh, that's a very important uh, feature. And uh, have page label output 
intents includes uh, a CSF X data, which allows to specify more information about spot colors, and also has a specific uh, specification on link layout orders on if you print black first or, uh, or, or or cyan first, especially if you have spot colors. That's very very important. Then there are some other uh, ideas or topics which are in discussion with, with different status. Probably Dov knows more because he was at the last meeting. And um, so there are diff different ideas, uh, like also using uh, two, two output intents for dual purpose uh, PDF X files, one for the monitor and one for printing. And, and uh, so there's a lot of, of, of ideas there. So my guess is that. Uh, only for this one, we need a new PDFX version, and uh, uh, <clears throat> there's not enormous things uh, in progress because we are already very mature here. Uh, but I think there are some 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 refinements necessary. I think these are very very important things. So yeah, yeah. yeah, So that's why my prediction is it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. We're at a, almost within one minute of the end of the total time, so we yep. don't have much time for q and A. I I just want to make, as moderator, I want to make one particular very important comment, and that is, is that the issue in terms of uh, transparency blending PDFX4 is not one that you could readily get into using any application that's available right now, and that uh, Quite frankly, the Ghent work groups are cho choosing to stay with non-color managed PDFX4 is more a reflection of conservatism on the part of Luddite uh, <coughs> publishers in Europe than it is anything to do with reality. I don't agree with that, and I will prove you wrong. Okay. I decided we will create test patches using regular versions of Adobe software, which will have different rendering and different systems. No, normal, normal use of our product <coughs> does not generate that. You can generate it, I'm sure, but I'm saying normal use by normal users Who? will not generate it. You, you should know. You're dealing with creative people. Are no. these normal users? Yes. No. Okay. Do we have other questions? Comments? Could you say again what you mean by live text? Uh, it means that you have text as text objects and not the contours of the text, uh, which are text. only illustrations, basically. It's not supposed to be changed after it has been produced. No, 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 no text. text. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But if you want to compare text with text, then you need you need the text in both files. Uh, I have a general question: Will these presentations be available for the audience? Yes, they will be. They'll be made available on the PDF Association's website. <coughs> Yeah. I after the conference is over, I don't know if there. I think yeah, because people are yeah. working on this presentation until the last moment. <laughs> right. Other questions? There's one question. Yes. Um, you mentioned 4P, X4P for the reference of a profile. Um, is <coughs> this going to be a little bit more advanced? Because today there is a page, yes, but if uh, the profile is not there, let's say um, an application that would look for. The uh, output intent it doesn't find it there. Uh, what's happening then, basically? And it's a little bit of a question where those profiles are stored. If they are in a good meta there, for example, the ICC web page there that has those profiles is working not very well maintained, I would say. And and, and is there some structure or some some ideas to structure that view to be really useful as this as a standard? So it's 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 there's two strategies. Basically, the first one, a simple one, would be first you look on the, in your profile direction on the local hard disk. If there is, this profile is not there, then mm -hmm. you could still look if there's a profile with the same characterization data, which by the way, Acrobat 9 and, and 10 probably also is doing. Uh, so if you have ISO code not installed, it would take for code to focus 39 from, from Adobe. So there's a, a, a table built in on, on, what, on what, what to use, as far as I found out. And the other strategy would be really go to that website and, and download that, that, that uh, ICC profile. So I'm not sure if I want my RIP to go to a website and download uh, any, any profile. The, the idea behind 4P, originally this was going to be labeled 5P, but uh, someone on the ISO committee, no one in this room, but someone in this building, 
uh, campaign that if we call it 5P, no one would ever use it. So we have it named 4P, and no one is ever using it. No one is using it. Because it's Bucky. Well, it's more, it's more than that. If you can't produce content with it, in other words, you can't export directly from any application that will, that will generate a 4P file, then it's less likely to be used. <clears throat> the reason for it originally was the belief that the gigantic archives of PDF files, they didn't want to have the overhead of half a megabyte of, of a typical CMYK profile. It's one and a half <laughs> megabytes. That you was have the primary put, reason yeah. why this was done. So I, I gave you a use case, which I recently was running into one of my customers. They sent approval files to their customers using X4P. Mm -hmm. And now they can't because the, their customers are using Reader 11 and it crashes. Well, what, if, the, if the profile isn't available or where it says to be available? Yeah. yeah. The other thing is... Have you, have you reported that as a bug? Of course. No, 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 that's not what I'm asking. Not in saying it every <clears> time you lecture, but you actually submit a bug to Adobe on it. If you tell me how. Okay, so you haven't submitted a bug no. yet, so thank you. Okay. I, well, I'll follow up on that yeah. for you. I have another use case. We have 30,000 PDF X4 mm -hmm. files at Novartis, each one carrying one additional megabyte of, of, uh, of output intent, uh, 10,000 changes a year. Each file is, is still uh, shipped around with email at least 15 times, and I'm, I'm probably it's much no, more. I understand the, the, mm -hmm. the reason for it. The fact that the problem is, again, that until you have applications that actually can generate those directly, it's and less likely to be Who is going to do this application? It's a company no one, called no, Adobe. No one, no, one, no one has asked us for it, okay? Yeah. You know, if, and this, is, this comes down to a lot of the questions were asked in the original session this morning. Uh, you know, we're, we're driven by what the customers ask for. The customers don't ask for these sorts of things. And they're only asking for give us another version of EPUB or give us something that'll run on a tablet. Then we're not going to put this sort of thing in. If if major print associations, and I'm not talking about just Switzerland, but especially the United States, Germany, other parts of Europe, basically made this as something important, then perhaps it would go into the list of features. But it, we have never received a request from anybody for support for PDF uh, for X4P. Or for any of the because those people who, who tried it, like I, I wanted to introduce it in Novartis, and then suddenly I found out in the middle of the pilot test that if you if you go from page one to page two, then suddenly a device again, black turns into a four thing. Again, so there are bugs in the implementations again, by Adobe. Again, if you'd have no way of creating it, then you're not. There going is a to way. It's called Acrobat. Mm -hmm. I'm saying original, the original PDF file from InDesign or Illustrator, then it's not then people then it's not going to have the visibility for the rest of the world. Yeah, so in, include that in your export settings, and then we will start seeing that well, again, being used. If it's not a request for it, it ain't going to happen because they're not going to do it on the basis of my saying it might be nice. They'll do it on the basis of companies such as R. R. Donnelly, uh, Quad Graphics, those sorts of companies saying basically that they need it. Okay, so you go to them and ask them to put it in, and you know even Novartis they have come, come and set, uh, made a request for it over for it. No, they haven't. I, I can tell you that. Yeah, that's that's right. Yeah. Okay. So, because okay. my experience, if I have a request, then most of the time nothing happens. Well, same is true if I put in a request. It has to be companies that have large numbers of licenses of products. They're the ones who <coughs> determine what goes in these things. Small question. Can we go back one slide? There's one uh, shorthand. Uh, the DVCS. Yeah, that's an, uh, an internal product named Digital Vision Control System. 